In a home which utilizes a solar energy from a solar panels and has appliances that uses AC current to power those devices, he needs to convert the DC current from the solar or battery to an AC current for the AC devices. Therefore, the need of inverters is essential components to study. In this video, we want to see how an inverter works. Inverter converts DC current to AC current by switching the direction of a DC current several times per second. For example, in this circuit, we use the IGFIT to switch the DC current on and off. When one transistor is off, the other one is on. How? Let's start with simulating the inverter project inside Pro2 software. We have used several components such as integrated circuit CD4047, which is our controller. We have two resistors. We have two IGFITs. We have a transformer. We have a capacitor. We have variable resistor. Others devices in the circuit are the DC voltmeter and AC voltmeter. And also some motor to show the direction of current. The project shows that the motor connected at the DC source is rotating all through in one direction. While the motor connected at one end is alternating in direction, clockwise and anticlockwise. Now let's assemble our inverter. The inverter is able to convert the DC current to AC current with the help of the transistors. Through the signal from the controller terminal 10 and 11, the transistor enables conduction effectively. Now this is how. IGFIT is essentially a combination of a MOSFET and a BJT. It combines the high input impedance of a MOSFET with the high current capability of a BJT. The IGFITs here operate similarly to a MOSFET. Applying the voltage to the gate terminal controls the conductive between the collector and emitter. When a voltage is applied at the gate terminal, it controls the conductivity between the collector and emitter. Therefore, in this circuit, if we applying the voltage to the gate of one transistor, it allows conduction. Applying the gate voltage to the other transistor, it allows for conduction. Now, the second part of the circuit will experience the alternating current. Since when the first transistor is high and the other transistor is low. When we do this as transistor 1 is high and transistor 2 is low, then transistor 1 is low and transistor 2 is high, then we will get one complete cycle of the frequency. We need to do the opening and closing of transistor 1 and 2 60 times, each one second, to achieve 60 Hz frequency alternating current. This can be easily done by a controller, which can provide an on and off electrical signal for 60 times per second. The signal generated is square wave AC wave and has harmonic distortion. The harmonic distortions can reduce the efficiency of the inverter system due to overheating and power losses. Therefore, concept of the pulse width modulation arises. The pulse width modulation uses the square wave generated and reduces it to other smaller square wave signals with different widths. The width of the pulse, sometimes called pulse width offset, is commonly proportional to the amplitude of the output signal. Important parameters in pulse width signals are the duty signal and frequency. The duty cycle may be described as the fraction of a second that a signal has. Also, a frequency may be related to the amount of time a signal takes to complete an on-OFF state. Duty cycle can be 50%, 75%, 25%, and the rest. When we take a one frequency and give it a pulse width module, we will get a smooth AC current with no harmonic distortions. Therefore, we need a microcontroller that can provide this pulse width modulation at any frequency needed. Therefore, we can use CD4047. CD4047 has 14 terminal pins. It has the ability to operate in both astable and monostable mode. It has to be connected to the external resistor and capacitor, which in astable mode, it operates by charging a capacitor using a variable resistor that is mainly used to adjust the frequency near 50 Hz. In monostable mode, an external resistor must be connected between pin 1 and 3 of the IC that helps in determining the output pulse width. The CD4047 has 14 terminals. One is connected to the external capacitor. 
2 is connected to the external resistor. 3 is a common pin for establishing a connection with resistor and capacitor. 4 is for astable and must be kept low when used in astable mode. 5 is still a stable and must be kept high when used in astable mode. When I say high, it means state 1 or on state, and when it is low, it means state 0 or OFF state. Terminal 6 is for trigger, that is high to low transition will be given to this pin when used in monostable. Mode. 7 is VSS or ground pin. 8 is positive trigger, low to high transition when in monostable mode. 9 is external reset trigger when a high pulse is provided to this pin. Resetting Q to low and Q bar to high. 10 is Q which generates high output. 11 is Q bar is the inverse output of pin 10 producing a low output. 12 is the retrigger pin. This pin is used in monostable mode for simultaneously retriggering that is positive retrigger and negative retrigger. 13 generates oscillated output. 14 is VDD which is voltage supply pin. And the formula for determine the frequency of pin 10 and 11 is F is equal to 1 over 8.8 .8 times R times C. For example, I want the frequency to 60 Hz, and I have 200 ohm resistor. Using the formula, the required capacitor will be 9.47 microfarads. The generated output is therefore stepped up with a transformer. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, kindly subscribe, like, and share. See you in the next one.